Hey guys, Chaps here, and welcome back to another Gears War 4 Horde Guide. Today we'll be taking a look at the various skill cards available for the Heavy class. The Heavy has 12 class specific skills that are primarily revolving around damage output. As always though, let's begin with the 5 general use cards and how they apply to the Heavy class. As with most cases, I don't see these being too viable. You're probably not carrying stuff, you're not buying stuff, so you don't need health cards or cost cards, and executions are a rare sight. That just leaves us with Team Revive. I'd say the Heavy is probably the most likely contender in our group to have this card, so I'll give it a bit more time on this video. Team Revive will revive any downed teammate and allow any dead teammate to respawn at the Fabricator. Not only that, but it gives all players, including those who were doing just fine beforehand, a brief moment of invulnerability. This is particularly useful on Iron Man runs, which I'll say seem few and far between these days, but in these runs, you can't pick up cog tags that are on the ground to revive dead teammates. So this is pretty much the only option, and I mean, it's always nice to have if you find yourself in a pinch. But enough of these general cards, let's look at the heavy specific ones. First up are a couple of explosive launcher cards. Explosive launcher damage will more than double, well, the damage of the explosive launcher, and capacity will give you up to 12 additional shots in reserve. Since launch, these have been two of the go-to cards for the heavy, and nothing has really changed in that regard. The heavy class is all about putting out large amounts of damage and specializing in fairly specialized but high DPS weapons. Explosives are one of the best things at your disposal, so these cards should always be on. Mark damage sorta of falls in this category as well. Don't take it off. With this maxed out, you'll deal an extra 60% damage to all marked enemies. No, not just the ones you've marked, but any marked enemy. Again, top tier card here, so max it and don't take it off. The last green quality card is heavy weapon damage. Depending on the run, I usually leave this one off. The exception is if we plan on doing a salvo-centric run, which were quite popular last year. They're still very strong runs, but I just find them boring, and most people seem to have moved on to new playstyles. Yeah, this card affects the Tri Shot, Buzzkill, and Mulcher as well, but those really aren't worth using in my opinion. The Tri Shot, maybe, but not often. The other two I wouldn't even consider. So if you plan on going salvo heavy, use this. It matches really well with the explosive launcher damage. If not, well, this is an obvious pass. Explosive Launcher Reload is a blue tier card, which still surprises me with every class. I don't know why the reload ones are always blue. I never really see them as being worth it. With the long shot as a sniper, maybe. And with all the heavy weapons only having one shot per reload, I mean maybe this is worth using? I find that the default reload really isn't that bad, and it somewhat helps you better manage the spacing of your shots. I feel that if I use this card, I'd probably run out of ammo too quickly. Depending on what you select, this may be worth keeping in your back pocket, but I certainly wouldn't place this near the top of your choices. Next, we have one of the few defensive cards for the heavy, and that is Thick Skin. In most setups, there's two main threats, besides bosses. Those are snipers and explosive scions. This won't help with the former, but it could help you with the latter. I emphasize could because it depends on what wave and the difficulty. On higher difficulties, I don't see this making much of a difference, and I'd pass. On lower difficulties, it could help a bit, but the benefit would fade on higher waves. Overall, I'd avoid this in lieu of other cards, but hey, you never know, it could always save your life at some point. Next, we have two turret cards, Capacity and Damage. I have no idea why on earth they gave the Capacity card to the Heavy class, that is not worth using at all. In order for this to activate, the Heavy needs to be the one to purchase or upgrade the turret, and that's just not gonna happen. Move this to the Engineer, and maybe the card is viable depending on the run, but for the Heavy? No, that's a hard pass. Turret Damage, on the other hand, was the original go-to card for the Heavy, and sadly enough, I think it was the last of the original cards that I ever got. Thanks, Aaron Jesus. Anyways, this card was king in the days of the turret-centric runs. Many teams still use this strategy, in which case you'll want this card on for sure. On the other hand, due to the great cost increase of turrets, and their ammo I guess, many teams are finding alternatives, and this might not be necessary. As with the heavy weapon damage card, this one really comes down to the user preference and the team strategy. If you plan on using turrets, definitely have your heavy turn this card on. Let's move on to the purple cards, and we'll begin with what I once considered the single worst card in the game, Mortar Strike. I no longer believe it's the worst card in the game, but man, it sure seems like it's trying to be. This is the mid-tier strike in terms of cost. It's essentially a much weaker version of the Hammer Strike. If you want to use strikes, this just isn't your best bet. 
Hammer is better when it comes to bunched up enemies, and sniper strikes are best mid-wave, from a cost perspective that is. I just can't justify this card, and even recording the gameplay for this video brings me to pain just equipping the card. In the theme of disappointing epic cards, how about Berserker and Last Stand? One reduces the damage you take, and the other increases your damage output. Sounds nice. Yeah, but I forgot something. This only procs A if you're holding a heavy weapon or launcher, and B, it only happens when you're taking damage. Let me start by saying that I don't use heavy weapons that much, so I'm a bit biased here. But I don't like the fact that these require you to take damage in order to get the benefit. More importantly, on higher difficulties, you're more than likely going to get one shot killed, so this thing won't even proc most of the time. To be honest, I feel that TC figured the heavy was in a pretty good spot pre-Rise of the Horde, and got really lazy with the new cards they added. Oh, and if you're someone who uses these cards, please let me know. I won't make fun of you, I honestly just want to know why. I didn't really give these much as a chance, so I'm curious to hear from someone who did. The last card for the heavy is Pistol Expert, which deals extra damage with each pistol shot. Oh, this card also gives some additional pistol ammo in reserve, which isn't mentioned on the card, but always a nice little bonus. I'll talk more about the mechanics of this card in the heavy guide next week, but for now, just know that this card is pretty good. Should you use it? Eh, maybe. I turn it on occasionally. Previously, I mentioned a bunch of conditional style cards, and if you're doing a run that doesn't meet those conditions, you'll probably have room open, in which case, yeah, go ahead and throw this one on. I mentioned that TC figured the Heavy was in too good of a place pre-Rise of the Horde, and didn't really buff it that much, so yeah, I feel some of these cards were lazy here, but that doesn't mean the Heavy's in a bad place now. I mean, it was in a pretty good spot pre-Rise of the Horde. So which of these cards do I use, you may ask? Well, I always use Explosive Launcher Capacity and Damage. Next, I add on Mark Damage. If doing a turret run, I put on Turret Damage. If doing a Salvo run, I put on Heavy Weapon Damage. In my 5th card slot, I either run Team Revive or Pistol Expert. Or if not doing a turret or Salvo run, I can simply use both. This class is surprisingly easy for me to pick cards for, and even though I don't feel like there's a ton of options, even with just the first 3, I feel really powerful already. Now that's what I use, but what about you guys? Let us know in the comments, which cards do you prefer when playing as the Heavy? Also, be sure to let us know, do you prefer turrets, salvo, or just going ham with the explosives? With all that said, look out Thursday next week where I'll be breaking down the strategies and tactics for the Heavy class. Also, stay tuned tomorrow and all throughout next week to catch the guides for the other classes. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe to ensure that you don't miss any of our content. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will catch you next time. Hey everyone, being this is our last planned set of Gears War 4 Horde Guides, I wanted to do what I can to ensure that these are accurate. For that reason, I'll be pinning a comment to each of the videos with three things. One, a link to a Reddit thread discussing Horde. Two, a link to a forum thread discussing Horde. And three, a list of updates based on feedback. So please, if you disagree with something, or if you want to discuss anything further, please reach out to me in any of the three places above, or on Twitter. We're normally pretty good about responding, and I'll do what I can to keep these pinned comments updated. Note that these may not all be live as soon as the videos go up, but I'll hopefully have them together within a week or two. Thanks again to everyone who's watched these videos, and I look forward to experiencing Gears 5 with you all next year.